Well, in the parlance of our neighbors to the north of us here, what is this all about? Stay tuned, you'll find out. Hey everyone, I'm Nick in the States, and today we're going to talk about what's the deal with Greg Bennett guitars, or Samick Greg Bennett guitars, or beautiful things like this that are so lovely. What's the deal? A uh, bit of history. This is my Samick UM3 Ultramatic. This one's made in Korea. Tasty, slim, arch top, Duncan design pickups. Very nice. Cool abalone uh, inlays on the dots on the fretboard. 22 frets. Grover tuners. Grovers. Neat headstock that if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you usually hate it. I like it. It's different. It's kind of cool. They did something with it. Um, bound neck. One volume, one tone. None of that coil tappy tomfoolery. Quilt, quilt top. And this one is in like a vintage sunburst. Very cool. Fingerprints and smudges and a little bit of wear and tear. But the cool thing with these guitars, and why I wanted to do this video, is they're one of the many that you can find on eBay. Guitar Center used, Craigslist, Music Around, pick the equivalent in whatever country you're in, um, that can be had at a really good price relative to quality. Now, I figured I'd do a little bit of history. Samick has been making guitars since, I think, 1958. Checks his notes, and he's correct, 1958. And they've had factories kind of across the Far East, so... Uh, Korea, China, and Indonesia. There's a good chance in the last few years if you bought an Indonesian-made guitar, it's probably made in a Samic factory. They were one of the first to branch out from Korea, South Korean base, uh, and open their own factory, train everybody in Indonesia. They kind of created that wave that, that went in there. So sometime in the early 2000s-ish, uh, Samic reached out to a guy named Greg Bennett to design a full range of guitars. They had been a contract manufacturer for a bunch of people. Samick named guitars had come out, I think, throughout the 80s and 90s. At least I've, that's where I've seen them. So they reached out to Greg Bennett, uh, who's a luthier, American luthier. Uh, he also had worked at Washburn, at Gibson, at Tascam, through Hamer, Takamini, Ovation, you know, kind of all over. And he, with the team there, designed a full range of guitars. It was very ambitious. Uh, I don't think they probably got the end result that they wanted to. Uh, sometime in the last 10 years or so, they've stopped producing electrics under the Samick Greg Bennett banner and really only produce acoustics. So that means used, you can see these at huge swings in price. So this UM3 model, new, they're about $500, give or take, in the US anyway. And they made you know, a fair number of them. You'll see these used today from the high end down to eBay at $575, which is someone trying to make a little money, or at least offset inflation, down to, I've seen it as little as $130, which is, in fact, what I paid for this one when I saw it hang on the wall in my local guitar center. So as you look across the rest of their, li their lines, it's there are a lot of deals to be had. These are quality, especially, I haven't played the Indonesian ones, but the Korean-made ones tend to have a pretty consistently high level of quality about what you'd expect from a PRSSE or Dean's or good Agiles from the good Agile era. Uh, they're about in the same par as those, so there's a lot of opportunity, and they're non-standard shapes. They're not straight-up copies. They're not, they took their own stuff, and they really designed a full line. And I think any of us that have been around guitars long enough have always dreamed about launching into our own thing, how we would do it, and sketched, I did. Right, I did. I did that with cars too. I wanted to create car lines. It's just what you do. That's just what I do. So anyway, this guy who was Ked Carte Blanche to do everything. They did acoustics and electrics. We're going to stick with electrics today because it's more fun for me. That's why. Anywho, let's talk about the range. So there actually were 12 main electric guitars that they offered through a period of time, and they kind of had two different revisions of them. For the most part, in the original run, if it had a, an AV1, AV2, a 1 or a 2 there, it was usually made in Indonesia. Kind of de a little bit, but still a pretty good little guitar, apparently. As I say, I haven't seen the Indos. If it was a three or higher, then it was made in Korea, South Korea. And uh, those ones that I've tried have been very, very consistently high quality. Pretty impressive. Then they had the two-digit ones, the 10s, the 20s, things like that. Those were later um, evolutions of things. 
I haven't also seen those, but people seem to like them, and some of those have a little bit of flair to them. So if we start and look at the line, so the first one we'll talk about is the Avion series, the AVs. And this was uh, Samick or Greg Bennett's take on sort of a less polished thing, two humbucker, single cutaway, a little tuck in the top here, as you can see in the photos. And they had these in an AV3, an AV6, an AV7, an AV20, a 70, and even an AV7 limited edition. A lot of different finishes. You'll see plenty of them online. I'm pretty sure the entire Avion series was made in Korea, except perhaps maybe the last two runs, the, the 20 and the 70, might have been in Indonesia. It's hard to tell. It's not a tremendous amount of, of details and information out there, so I'm going to guess there a little bit, but I at least know the 3, 6, and 7 all seem to have come out of North, uh, North Korea. Out of South Korea, not North Korea. Not much comes out of North Korea these days except faxes, declaring unhappiness with things. Let's move along and not go through that minefield, shall we? So anyway, the AVs, the Avions are definitely a different take on a less polished thing, but fitting into that two volume, two tone, two humbucker, set neck, mahogany body, maple-ish cap, veneers on it, that kind of thing. And I think all of their guitars are uh, flame or cooled maple veneer if there is one on it. Uh, but you can see some of these, that they're, they're very pretty guitar, uh, pretty guitars, yeah, pretty guitar. Next up we have the Ultramatic series, which was a UM1 or a UM3. UM1 was a flat top, um, made in Indonesia, basically things, still Duncan Design pickups, and the UM3 was like this, but you could get it, I believe, with a trem and without a trem, and then a handful of different finishes. Very kind of cool stuff. I like it because it's a PRS inspired, that same kind of thinnish, comfortable body, but not a PRS ripoff. Um, and the headstock really seems to work on this one. It's just, it's a very comfortable, very cool guitar that uh, I kept a lot longer than I thought I would. Um, and eventually we'll do a full review. I think I have a buddy of mine who really wants it. I'm staring at you, Jimmy. So we'll see what happens. But until then, uh, I'm going to enjoy keep playing this guy. The next one's actually really kind of cool. And, and I think taking the spot of an SG-ish guitar is a Torino. And I really think it's a nice modern update, unlike a Viper or something like that, which is just like a Lini SG or, a, you know, things like that. This kind of took it and made it higher class. Uh, it reminds me, I think the construction is very similar to the Ultramatic, but the proportions, the leans, everything else are, are a different take on it. They've got some very pretty finishes. These are ones that you can usually find good deals on eBay for. I've seen them in there, usually under $200 for the TR two threes. Um, I've never seen a TR four, but I see a lot of TR uh, ones, twos, and threes. I think ones and twos are from Indonesia. The three is from South Korea. And they tend to all have, or at least the twos and threes tend to have really pretty tops. I like the carved, full carved top, arch top of the TR3. I think it's nice and high quality, whereas the TR2 is kind of like that beveled edge. Still a pretty sweet line. I know later in the run they came out with a TR10, a TR30, and then a TR33, which had three mini hums, which I'd never seen before until I was looking through the website. That's kind of sexy. So it's something different, you know, and we are nothing here if not embracing the different weird stuff that's out there. Moving along to the Malibu, which the Malibu takes the Stratocaster spot on there with the ML, the MB1, and it was just basically their standard stratty looking thing with a 3x3 headstock though. So similar headstock as this. Later they came out with the MB30, 50, and 80. 80. The 80 is really more like a super strat. The 30 and the 50 are SS, S and SSH kind of situations. The next one is the Cobra, the CA. And really it's just the CA2, although they did a mini one. Um, and this is like an SG gone to BC Rich School or something, like kind of that metal-y mean thing. Um, they did this thing even with a black with like red tips on the spikes and stuff. Really kind of cool. You see these kicking around a lot because I think people outgrew the wonderment of it <laughs> as they got older. Next up, you can't play the ball game of a guitar company without something to kind of take over the telecaster -ish space. And in this case, they're going to call it the FA, the formula, FA1 and FA2. I believe the FA2s were all like quilt top, flame toppy, awesome, bunch of different cool finishes, including like a tobacco burst like this. Um, whereas the FA1, I think, was more planes or transparent finishes, but with like non figured tops. Um, you need to have a telly in the line. They did this. The FA2, I believe, also was like a Nashville telly, free pickup. Next up is one of my favorite ones, and I believe all of these were made in Korea, and that's the LaSalle series, the Jay Z's. And they did a Jay Z 234, and then later a 15 and a 20. And these were nice because Simic made a lot of the, the jazz copies for people around there. I think they even made, after Peerless, some of the Epiphones. And I've played one of these in the store, and it, it just felt really nice. A little heavier than you maybe thought it would. But 
really nice, pretty stuff. And the nice thing is they've got it with a Florentine cutaway, with a Venetian cutaway. They're trapeze bridges of their own little design. You could get them with Bigsby's later, or you could easily retrofit them with the Bigsby when you wanted to. Uh, these, the prices on these, though, have held strong, rarely under 400 even for like a Jay-Z 2, um, and up to like 7, 8, 9, or the Stratosphere, and some people think that they have the world's best jazz guitar um, on the, the Jay-Z 4s that you'll see out there. But very, very cool. I think they're right up there with like a Washburn J6, Washburn J7, uh, and perhaps even made in the same factories, who knows in that really nice range of quality for a, a, a jazz box. Maybe a nice gigging, if you're like a busker who's playing jazz, that kind of stuff. You don't want to bring you know, your nitro, Gibson-y kind of stuff out. It like, fits in a good spot there, but still has quality with good pickups. Next, we have the Metalhead, because you have to. And it's another pointy, super stratty, evil thing to drive your parents insane. And also so that later, when you still own it 10 years later, you're going, Ugh. Or maybe it just brings you back. Maybe it's a nostalgia piece. Who knows? There you go. They also did a bunch of minis from like a P-Based and a Mini Cobra. And I know, I think I've seen a Mini Stratty thing. Um, yeah. Keep right out if you're really jonesing for some miniature guitar action. Next, venturing in from the land of the super strat carved toppy sort of prs -y. If this isn't your sort of prs -y take and you want your prs -y thing to be more of a super strat, you have the Concord series, the CD2 and the CD3. And I believe the CD2 was Indo, and I believe the CD3 was your North, Co North Korean. South Korean! South, not North! Damn you, reading CNN before doing videos. Or Fox News. Well, that way you can't criticize which side of the aisle I might be on. Anyway, um, super shoddy stuff, Duncan Design things, nice cool tops, that kind of stuff. Pretty cool. I haven't seen very many of these, but when I was just looking on eBay prior to making said video, this video right here, the one I'm talking to you, hi. Um, they actually were quite a few of these on there, so cool. Next is the Fastback, and, and their website of retired models is a little incomplete, only as the FB1. I have definitely seen Fastbacks in like two and three guises with full carve tops, a lot like this. They're a bit thicker, but it's kind of your like if PRS was inspired by an offset fender sort of thing, maybe this is what they would have built. And they're very, very cool. I've played them. They, it definitely just feels like a lot of your other really good quality Korean guitars and maybe the combination of colors and, and the look gives you something different. So when you show up to play with the kid in the band that's got the Les Pauly thing and the kid, the, the other kid in the band because you're in a three guitar band, which seems like a lot of fun, um, as a stratty, you can go and jam with this and it's something different, looks different, looks unique, uh, maybe looks good in the poster, who knows? Just an idea, I'm just, just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. And the last one's the Interceptor, which is their more classical flat-topped with an arm bouty thing, uh, Super Strat. And they did these later in the, the line of Greg Bennett's, the IC 10, 20, and 30. So, cool, cool stuff. That's basically the line. Hope I didn't bore you there. They did a lot of different things. They were very ambitious. They ran the line for maybe 10 years, eight years, something like that, give or take. And then they, um, they kind of bowed out of it. So that gives you the opportunity to perhaps score some cheap. Um, in the last uh, two or three months, between guitar shops, eBay, and Craigslist, I've seen a handful of them, the good ones, and even some of the Korean ones, for under $200. And I think at that price range, dude, they're so worth it. Um, they look great. They, they tend to play really well. They built them with really good things, parts and whatnot. The, it's just, they are better than that price. This even has two strap positions, so you can decide which one you like better. I mean, come on, two, two, right? That's cool. So, good stuff. Uh, if you're curious on what happened with Greg Bennett and Samick later, the Greg Bennett acoustics have kept going. Apparently, they found kind of a good niche. Um, and then Greg Bennett uh, then started up Ethan Hart guitars. And Ethan Hart has basically two designs, one of a single cutaway, one of a double cutaway, that are very metal! It's my, I can't go any higher than that. Um, very evil looking in that modern matte finish with um, bright colors, kind of fades and whatever. Very, very cool, still doing stuff there. I've seen those around. Um, it's very cool. I imagine he's still using Samick maybe as a manufacturing base. And I think it's implied on his website that that might be the case. So, anyway, this is my semi-exhaustive What's the Deal with Samick Greg Bennett Guitars. They're another one of those cool little 
bastard children left wandering around used wherever you may buy used stuff that um that are still really good that are worth it that are worth your attentions to go at least take one down off the rack play it for a little bit and you might have just found a little guitar soulmate to play for a period of time um maybe forever maybe for a year maybe for a day but it'll be worth it i think that they'd make good stuff and um we're all about finding the great deals under 500 bucks here that actually are still good quality keep your eyes peeled for an actual making noise review of this which will happen at some point in the near future until then i've been nick in the states yes folks i do have issues you take care